check out the size of these dandelions. Oh, oh. I'm Rob Greenfield and today I'm going to try to make a three course meal where I incorporate weeds that you can find in your backyard, public parks, and wild spaces into each of the three courses. The three courses I'm going to make are a weeds and flower salad, a soup with wild onions and stinging nettle, and for dessert, battered elderflower, plus a stinging nettle tea. My goal is to forage at least 15 different ingredients to incorporate into this meal. And for the foods that I don't forage today, my goal is to have them be almost all foods that came from this land during different seasons. I'm doing my foraging today at a farm in southern France as well as the woods around the farm. I came to Europe to do a speaking tour and that was canceled because coronavirus happened. I've been here at this farm, La Reve de Gaia, for about five weeks now. Now most people when they look into this field they just see grass and weeds. But when I look into this field, I actually see nature's salad bar. It's just a matter of learning the land and thinking about the land in a different way. Here is wild mustard. The nice thing about wild mustard is you can eat the leaves, you can eat the flowers, the seeds as well, and you can actually make your own mustard with it. The amazing thing about these wild greens or these weeds is they're actually very diverse in flavor. You have sour, you have sort of sweet, you have spicy. You can see there's different shapes of dandelion. Often when greens are growing in the shade, they grow much larger. It's reaching up to get to the sun and it's not very bitter because it's in the shade. This is the perfect dandelion for the salad. By the way, the dandelion flower is a real nice treat as well. Now this here is the elder tree or shrub I'm going to make my dessert with. Oh, wonderful smell. This is actually the first time that I'll ever batter the elderflower. So this is new to me. This is going to be an experiment for the third course. Now this here is cleaver and this is the type of plant a lot of people don't like because they stick to you. And what we're going to be using today is just the soft tips. This is garlic mustard which is perfect for the salad and also great blended up into the soup. So this is wild onion that I was in search of. And this stuff is the centerpiece of the second course, the soup. For this, I'm simply picking the leaves. There are different wild onions and leeks and garlics that you'll often find in yards. Now, you can actually eat pine needles. You wouldn't want to eat the, the hard ones, but it's the soft, tender ones that you want. I'm thinking about possibly using these tips as a garnish on the soup. So here is wild mint. I'm going to use this to add some nice flavor to the salad. And I'm just picking the nice tips. The plants will regenerate. By doing this, they'll actually fork out and produce more. The key to foraging is to make sure that you forage sustainably. Here surrounding me is wood sorrel or oxalis. When you take a bite, it's got a very lemony flavor. I'm going to blend this up with the dressing. I don't have lemon, but I have this nice lemony flavor for the dressing. So here's stinging nettle and this is one of the most important ingredients for this meal. The way to do it is you just pinch the tops off and by doing that you're able to drastically reduce the amount you get stung. A lot of people are really afraid of nature and that keeps them from eating nature's bounty. People are afraid of the stings of this thing. So to make you a little less afraid, I'm gonna do this. I'm burning! We are back at the farm and I managed to collect 15 different ingredients for this three course meal. For flowers, there's vetch and clover and elderflower. There's a whole lot of different greens. We have mustard, garlic mustard, dandelion, broadleaf and narrowleaf plantain, wood sorrel, pine needles, cleaver, stinging nettle, wild onion, linden or lime tree leaf. Course number one, the salad, I'm gonna do that first. Most of these I am just cutting up. Wild greens have a lot of flavor and a lot of people are very adverse to bitter, but bitterness is actually a sign that it has really important nutrients. I'm gonna throw some mint in there. Along with the vetch, I'm putting on the clover. I also have the elderflower. Every flower has its own unique flavor 
but they also just add beauty. And I'm actually throwing one last ingredient into the salad and that is the mustard flowers to give it a little bit of spice. That'll also balance out the bitter a little bit. So this salad has 12 different ingredients that we foraged from the land today. Now as far as the ingredients that I didn't forage, we have flour, there's olive oil, salt, vinegar, this is a chestnut cream and the chestnuts were foraged locally, and blackberry jam and the blackberries were foraged locally. These potatoes have been in storage for over six months from the farm here and they've just started to sprout. They're still good, we just have to cut the outsides off. And the same goes for these carrots. We're gonna use those for the soup. And I'm gonna make the salad dressing. I've got my olive oil. I've got my balsamic vinegar. And then I'm going to put the mustard flowers and the flower pods into here. And then as well, the wood sorrel. So I just gotta bring that inside and blend it up. Oh, strong. I think that's gonna be good. I almost forgot the walnuts for the salad. And these are not walnuts that I foraged, but they foraged them last winter. Those will definitely add to the salad. All right, so I'm gonna make a stinging nettle tea. That is as simple as taking some of these nettles, putting them in a pot, adding some water, and then I'm just gonna boil that. And nettle tea is one of the most nutritious things that you can make from the land. And these nettles are still edible and I can just add these to the soup. Now it's time to make the soup. And I just cut up a whole bunch of the wild onion. For the stinging nettle, I'm just gonna throw that right in because this is gonna be a blended soup, so I don't even have to chop that up. For these potatoes, just break off all of these sprouts. And I'm outside, so I can just toss the sprouts right back to nature. No food scraps belong in the garbage. They go to the landfill and then they emit methane, so it's best to compost your food scraps. I don't normally peel my potatoes, there's a lot of nutrients in it as well, but since these are such old potatoes and they've possibly built up cyanide in the skin from greening, I'm peeling them. And then I'm going to chop up the carrots. So that is the soup. I actually already boiled a little water just to get that going. Also got some coriander. These are seeds that were saved from the farm here. I'm just gonna leave the soup to boil. All right, the soup is done cooking and now I'm just gonna blend it up to give it a nice creamy consistency. I am making the batter for the elderflower. This is the first time that I've done this. The egg is cracked, water adding. Last thing, flour going in. I am a little nervous, it's the end of the night. There's people waiting to try it. There's the first one in the batter, and whoa! Oh, nice smell! It smells kind of like a carnival. Whoa! First one down, looks like I did it for a little too long. I should have read a recipe for this. If this works, it's gonna be great. If it doesn't work, gonna be a disappointing end of the day. I did it! There's the salad that has about a dozen ingredients from the land, the soup with the wild onion and the stinging nettle, and then the battered elderflower, and that one's gonna be the most interesting one. Now it's time to try it out. And I have Vere and Chloe who are gonna help me. Come on in. Vere's from Scotland, Chloe's from here in France, I'm from the United States, so we've got multiple perspectives here. Nice. Whoa! It's very tasty. I like the lemoniness of the dressing. You made a good salad. Great job. All right. What's this on the top? That's the pine needle, the oh. young pine needle from mm. the spruce. Mm. Mm. That's so good. Dang. With more flowers than I expected. Really good. Antoine, the man of the farm, just arrived. <laughs> Let's see what he thinks. <laughs> I think this is really good. Oh! It's juicy. Mm. Dang! That tasted mm. just like a carnival to me. 
All right, it was a success. Everybody liked every single meal. I liked every part of it. Food is growing freely and abundantly all around us everywhere we go, whether it is our backyards and front yards, and it is there for us to pick. But it is also there for us to protect and make sure that we are stewards of the land when we're foraging and that we're not taking more than we actually give back. So I hope that this has been an inspiration for you to incorporate more wild foods into your diet.